Okay. That is sewer, uh, puzzle on us, portal and cement, blast furnace, DFS, etc. Cementing material used in drilling operations. So isolate zone, support casing in the borehole, then protecting the casing from collapse, corrosion, and drilling shock. Plug non producing wells for abutment, plug portion of a well for side tracking. And also, we are explaining some additives to control the cementing slurry properties for the ideal operation guidelines. Etc. Then plug designs, spacer guidelines, and then you can see here the uh, cementing additives. Slurries prepared with cementing materials are treated with various additives to modify set time, rheological, and filtration properties and density. The additives are accelerators, retarders, fluid con loss control additives, extenders, free water control additives. Being agents, lag activators, dispersants, strength retrogression preventers. Then accelerators. Accelerators actually shorten slurry set time and allow the slurry to develop necessary compressive strength in a practical time frame. Then amount of various additives used are listed in the following table. You can see the table. So these are the well cementing additives. Calcium chloride, sodium chloride, KCl, alcohol, sodium hydroxide, gypsum, and sodium silicate. So, accelerating additives which are used in the adjust the set time of cement slurries. Concentration also shown here. <coughs> then, next is your retarders. So, retarders delay the slurry set time, and this delay allows the cement to be placed before. Hardening occurs. So, these additives counter the effect of increased temperature on the cement slurry. So, this table gives the operation guidelines for retarding additives. So, we can see here the additive cubroxine, calcium lignosulfate, sodium gluconate, sodium hypoheptogluconate, sodium citrate. So, this is your retarding additives. Concentration also shown here. Then this table gives the fluid loss control additives. That is, excessive losses of water to the formation can prevent the cement from hardening correctly. Therefore, fluid loss control additives are used to reduce the excessive loss of water to the formation. So, in addition, these additives increase the viscosity, retard the set time, control free water in the slurry. And this table lists, lists the common fluid loss control additives for cement slurries. So you can see the additives PAC, CMC, HEC, CMHC, Barazan Plus. So temperature concentration also shown here. You can go through it. Fluid, console, fluid loss control additives. So these additives control the amount of water loss to the formation. Then next is your extenders. Extenders lighten the density of the slurry for cementing across weak formation. So a lighter slurry slows the hydrostatic pressure and helps prevent the formation damage. So this table gives the operation guidelines for extender additives. So you can see the additive, aqua gel, fly ash, puzzle sodium silicate and concentration also shown and temperature range also shown. So this is your uh, extender additives, lower slurry density and help prevent pressure damage to weak formations. Then next is free control, free water control additives. So free water control additives tie up water in the lightweight or extended slurries. So if this water were not controlled, the slurry properties would change as water was absorbed into the surrounding formation. Therefore, this absorption affects slurry flow placement. Therefore, this table gives the operation guidelines for these additives. So, you can see the additive, then water free control additives, free water control additives, aluminum chloride, aqua gel, etc. Then you can see here the uh, materials are used to increase the density of the cements or slag and help to control the formation pressure. So, weighing material, barite, hematite, sand. Then slag activators, that is blast surface furnace slag is a latent hydraulic cement material 
that does not readily react with water. Because of this, hydration process for VF is initiated by either chemical activators or elevated temperature. So chemical activators are used as needed in different ratios and concentration depending on the expected temperature and encountered. So you can see the slag activators, caustic soda, soda ash, lime, magnesium hydroxide, magnesium carbonate, tetrasodium, pyrophosphate, and sodium acid pyrophosphate. These are called slag activators designed to trigger the cell process in BFS slurries. The temperature range is shown here, less than 8, 180, less than 180, and one between 150 to 250 for magnesium hydroxide, etc. Then this one, you can see here, table, this one gives the dispersants. Dispersants actually reduce the slurry viscosity, which is very important for placement and cohesion. So proper dispersion of slurry results in enhanced early compressive strength and improved fluid loss control and improved free control. So this table gives operation guidelines for dispersion. You can see here naphthalene sulfate, cubroxine, calcium, lignosulfate, and the temperature so are shown here. Then strength regression preventers cement and BFS slurries that remain in temperature above 94 degrees exhibit a reduction of compressive strength over time. Therefore, this phenomenon is called strength retrogression, which can be minimized or prevented by adding another source of silica, such as silica floor or silica slant to the slurry. So silica floor requires more mixing water than silica sand to achieve the same viscosity. Therefore, the number ranges concentration are given in the table seven, the following table. So you can see here the strength regression preventer, silica floor and silica sand, and concentration is shown. Strength regression preventers. Then slurry design application next. That is slurry which whether cement or BFSS must be tailored to each different respect of the drilling operation. Therefore, some of the different classification of slurries include lead slurry, tail slurry, squeeze slurry, and plugs. So, lead slurry is designed to cover a large portion of the annulus, either open hole or inside casing. And these slurries are lightweight extended slurries that do not contribute greatly to the hydrostatic head of the cement column. Then, tail slurry is designed to provide most of the support for the casing or liner being cemented. And this slurry is placed over the zone of interest to isolate the zone from contamination. Therefore, the zone of interest or some other zone that needs to be closed up. The characteristics include high density and ability to develop high compressive strength. And uh, next is your, uh, and also a good set time control, no free water, fluid loss. Control additives may be required for tail slurry. The next is squeeze slurry. Squeeze slurries are designed for remedial or secondary cementing. So these slurries must have good set control time, good fluid loss control, and especially good compressive strength development and plugs. Plugs could be designed to meet the requirement of the specific application, whether kickoff plug, loss irritation plug, plug and abundant. Ideally, Plugs should have a high compressive strength and development to seal the plug zone and short set time. Next is spaces. Three main functions of spaces are to serve as a barrier between the drilling fluid and the cement slurry and thus eliminating the contamination between the two. Then clean the casing and the formation of drilling fluid that could prevent good adhesion and act as a wetting agent that wets the casing and the formation. So for a spacer to be effective, it must fall within the certain guidelines for density and compatibility. And the spacer must be more denser than the mud, but not as dense as cement slurry. So the margin should be 1 to 1.5 LB gallon each way. And this range allows the spacer, allows spacer to separate the uh, flu, two fluids and prevent them from contaminating each other. So the spacer needs to be rheologically compatible 
with uh, both the mud and the cement and the ideal viscosity of this spacer should fall between the viscosity of the mud and the cement so you can see the spacer volume calculation spacer volume the following equation should be used pt equal to tc into qd into 5.615 where vt is the volume of fluid cubic per feet tc is the record contact time and qd is the displacement rate so in most cases the contact time of 10 minutes or more provide excellent removal provides excellent removal so these are the basic cementing calculations uh, so these are the basic uh, cementing calculation which we are seeing today's lecture so we'll see more in our uh, next uh, presentation subscribe my channel thank you